tonight. Ceasefire call. With the US abstention, the United Nations Security Council sees the Gaza ceasefire deal pull through. However, Israel continues to cry foul about the new position it's in. Trump's trouble. With his legal troubles mounting, Trump begins to reluctantly prepare for an April trial date, the hearing potentially making or breaking his future at the White House. Cyber crisis. The UK stands firm on sanctioning Chinese individuals believed to be responsible for cyber attacks, with China county to deny what it calls baseless allegations. And medical marvels. The future of transplants may already have arrived with the help of some close animal relatives. All that and more as World News Tonight starts right now. This is Ava Vedrana World News Tonight. Good evening and thank you for joining us on World News Tonight. I am Vinod Varnasurya and with Tuesday coming to a close, we have a variety of key stories and updates to report to you on our bulletin. Starting off with, without any further ado, on the Israel-Palestine conflict. Some hopeful news as the United Nations Security Council adopted a resolution demanding an immediate ceasefire between Israel and Palestinian militants Hamas and all of the released hostages after the United Nations abstained from the vote. Please their, raise their hand. A crucial vote at the UN Security Council on Monday laid bare the friction between the US and its ally Israel over the war in Gaza. Previously, the United States had vetoed three Security Council resolutions over the fighting in Gaza as Israel pressed its offensive against Hamas militants in the Palestinian enclave. But as civilian deaths continued to climb and the humanitarian situation deepened into deadly famine, U.S. President Joe Biden began to press Israel to reach a truce that would allow food and medicine to reach the more than two million civilians trapped in Gaza. When the latest resolution calling for an immediate ceasefire went before the Security Council, those are against. the U.S. envoy didn't vote no. Abstention. She abstained. The draft resolution has been adopted. As the chamber erupted into applause as the measure passed. The reverberations were immediate. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu canceled a planned delegation to Washington that had been requested by the White House. A statement from his office read, quote, In light of the change in the American position, Prime Minister Netanyahu decided the delegation would not leave. The Biden administration had asked to meet with Israeli security officials about a planned offensive in the city of Rafah, where Netanyahu has pledged to eliminate remaining Hamas brigades. More than one million civilians have sought shelter in Rafah, and humanitarian groups have warned turning the city into a war zone would turn a humanitarian disaster into an even greater catastrophe. White House spokesperson John Kirby called the cancellation disappointing, but added that senior U.S. officials would still meet for separate talks with Israeli Defense Minister Yoav Gallant, who is currently in Washington. The diplomatic dust-up between Washington and Jerusalem comes as Israel on Monday announced it would no longer cooperate with UNRWA, the United Nations agency tasked with delivering aid and social services to Palestinians in Gaza. UNRWA are part of the problem. Israeli spokesperson David Mercer accused UNRWA of being, quote, part of the problem. Totally unacceptable. That was met with unvarnished outrage from UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres. Speaking in Amman, Jordan, on Monday, he said blocking UNRWA risked exacerbating what he called, quote, dramatic starvation. Israel has asserted its operation in Gaza is defensive after Hamas fighters killed 1,200 people in an October 7th rampage in Israel and took more than 200 hostages. Palestinian health officials say more than 32,000 Palestinians have been killed in five months of war. Moving on now to Trump's legal troubles, a New York judge's decision to set an April 15 trial date for Donald Trump's criminal hush money case ups the odds the former president will face at least one verdict that could complicate his bid to retake the White House on the November 5th. They're dying to get this thing started. Donald Trump railed against a judge's decision on Monday to set his criminal hush money trial for April 15th after the Republican presidential candidate's efforts to postpone the case. The start date all but ensures that Trump will become the first ever former U.S. president to go on trial for criminal charges. It also paves the way for Trump to either be convicted or cleared before the November 5th election. If this was a case could have been brought three and a half years ago, and they decide to wait now, just during the election, so that I won't be able to campaign. I will be appealing this. 
Trump has pleaded not guilty to 34 counts of falsifying business records to hide a $130,000 payment to silence porn star Stormy Daniels. The hush money was paid to Daniels through Trump's former lawyer and fixer Michael Cohen before the 2016 election. Daniels says she and Trump had a sexual encounter a decade earlier, which Trump denies. The case is one of several Trump faces as he ramps up his 2024 campaign against Democratic President Joe Biden. But a U.S. appeals court handed the 77-year-old a lifeline in a separate case on Monday, giving Trump 10 additional days to post a substantially lower $175 million bond to stave off enforcement of a $454 million civil fraud judgment. I greatly respect the decision of the appellate division and I'll post either $175 million in cash or bonds or security or whatever is necessary uh, very quickly within the 10 days. The decision is a win for Trump as it blocks New York state authorities from beginning to seize his assets. A judge had ordered him to pay the nearly half billion dollars for overstating his wealth to dupe investors and lenders. New York Attorney General Letitia James's office said Trump is, quote, still facing accountability for his staggering fraud. Monday's appeals court decision also eases an acute cash crunch brought on by Trump's mounting legal expenses. Currently, Trump has to raise money for both his campaign and his legal issues, costs that are likely to rise as he faces four criminal trials. Trump has pleaded not guilty and has denied wrongdoing in all four cases. And now on the road to the White House tonight, following in Nikki Haley shattering her presidential campaign, we expected to see most of the Republican camp rallying around Trump. But there are still those who refuse to back former President Donald Trump and plans to reluctantly vote for the President Joe Biden instead. The former UN ambassador's base was never big enough to seriously challenge Mr. Trump before he clinched a third straight Republican nomination. But in what's shaping up to be a tight rematch between Mr. Trump and Mr. Biden, the apparent splintering of Ms. Haley's voters and donors could hurt Mr. Trump's general election chances, particularly in battleground states full of suburban voters who remain dubious of a Mr. Trump return to the White House. For now, the interviews with Ms. Haley's supporters suggest they could go in a variety of directions with some backing Mr. Trump, some going for Mr. Biden, and others seeking a third-party options or avoiding making a decision about the presidential race yet. Ms. Haley has not spoken publicly since leaving the race and urging Mr. Trump to reach out to all Republicans. She has not endorsed Mr. Trump and suggested she may not at all. Still in the US, some tragic updates as the bridge in the city of Baltimore has entirely collapsed into the river of Patesco after being hit by a container ship. The Baltimore City Fire Department, who are currently at the scene, say up to 20 people and several vehicles have fallen into the river. The fire department says a larger vessel hit the column of the Francis Scott Key Bridge, causing the event. The Singaporean flagged cargo ship that struck the Francis Scott Key Bridge in Baltimore today altered course and veered toward a pillar shortly before impact. It's unclear what caused the ship to crash into the bridge or why its lights were flickering. The container ship Dali, which was en route to Colombo, Sri Lanka, begins to change course towards the bridge pillar at 1.26 a.m. local time, striking the bridge at 1.28 a.m., according to the marine traffic data and video from the scene. Baltimore Mayor Brandon Scott told, the early morning collapse of the Francis Scott Key Bridge is an unspeakable tragedy. And while there is concern for status of the bridge, traffic and port, Scott wants to concentrate on victims that may still be in water. The Federal Aviation Administration is restricting aircraft from flying over the wreckage of the Francis Scott Key Bridge in Baltimore. Let's go in for a short commercial break. Stay tuned for key global updates. Welcome back. In Asia now, the ASEAN member Thailand sent 10 trucks carrying 4,000 packages to three towns in Myanmar's Kain state, where it will be distributed to approximately 20,000 displaced people, but some pointed out that the assistance leaves out people in areas contested or controlled by resistance forces. Thailand started sending aid to military route Myanmar on Monday in a new humanitarian initiative backed by ASEAN. The initiative aims to pave the way for talks between warring camps in Myanmar. 
The critics say the aid will only help the junta as the majority of displaced people may not be able to access it. UN Special Rapporteur on the Situation of Human Rights in Myanmar, Tom Andrews, discussed the plan on March 20th. The problem that we have right now is that humanitarian aid is not going in the, to the areas that need it most. And I'm talking about the conflict areas, the areas outside of, uh, this, of, of SAC uh, administered areas of the country. This is the, the fastest growing part of the country. Uh, that is where most of the people, growing numbers of people in the country that need humanitarian aid are. Myanmar has been locked in conflict since the military seized power in 2021, appending a decade of tentative democracy and reform. At least 2.6 million people have been displaced by fighting, according to the UN, and more than 18 million people are in need of assistance. Thailand's foreign ministry said the first batch of relief bags carry rice, dried food, and other essentials for 20,000 people. It was delivered in a convoy by the Thai Red Cross to its Myanmar counterpart at the Mesot Maiwadi border crossing and will be distributed in three pilot locations observed by ASEAN's Humanitarian and Disaster Agency. The project is part of a wider peace initiative by Thailand to establish a humanitarian corridor as the civil war intensifies between Myanmar's military on one side and ethnic minority armies and the resistance movement on the other. And in the UK, some cyber complaints during a statement in Parliament, British Deputy Prime Minister Oliver Dowden said the United Kingdom has imposed sanctions on two individuals and one company affiliated to the Chinese state accusing them of malicious cyber activity, targeting officials, government entities and parliamentarians. For more on this, we have other Nobel News Special Correspondent Aruni Adhikari from Nottingham in the UK. Aruni? Yes. Authorities in the UK and United States have accused the hacking group nicknamed APT-31 of being an arm of China's Ministry of State of Security and railed off a laundry list of targets including British parliamentarians and government officials across the world who criticised Beijing. During a news conference in London, Member of Parliament Lane Duncan Smith said British politicians who are critical of China have been subjected to harassment, impersonation and attempted hacking. The US said in a statement that the aim of the global hacking operation was to repress critics of the Chinese regime, compromise government institutions and steal trade secrets. The Chinese embassy in London said the claims were completely fabricated and malicious slanders. Britain has spent the last years trying to improve ties with China after the relationship sunk to its lowest points in decades under former Prime Minister Boris Johnson when London restricted some Chinese investments over national security worries. Back to you. Thank you, and that was Adar Naval News Special Correspondent Aruni Adhikari from Nottingham in the UK. An update on Boeing's turbulent times now. Boeing announced a leadership reform headlined by the departure of CEO Dave Calhoun as the aviation giant faces heavy scrutiny following safety incidents and manufacturing issues. It's a major leadership shake-up for embattled aerospace giant Boeing as it fights to rebuild its scorch reputation. The company's CEO, Dave Calhoun, will step down by the year end, with top executives Larry Kellner and Stan Deal also leaving. We will remain squarely focused on completing the work we have done together to return our company to stability after the extraordinary challenges of the past five years, with safety and quality at the forefront of everything that we do. The plane maker's full-blown safety crises kick-started in 2018, when a Boeing 737 MAX aircraft plunged into Indonesia's Java Sea shortly after takeoff, with no survivors. Just six months later, the death toll reached 346 when another 737 MAX went down in Ethiopia. The aftermath saw Boeing change leadership, as its MAX family jets were globally grounded for two years as the crashes were caused by an error in its MCAS stabilizing system. 
Late last year, Boeing urged airlines to conduct inspections of its 737 MAX jets after a bolt with a missing nut was discovered on two aircraft during routine checks. January saw the most recent black eye for Boeing's quality control when the cabin panel of a brand new 737 MAX blew out at nearly 5,000 feet, leaving a gaping hole in the plane. Later revealed by a National Safety Board probe to have been due to four crucial missing bolts in the door plug. According to the New York Times this month, air safety regulators at the FAA found dozens of problems in the 737 MAX's production after a six-week manufacturing audit. Boeing is facing legal action from passengers as well as a criminal probe into the incident. Let's take a short commercial break. More world news on the other side. Welcome back. We have for you some revolutionary medical news tonight that it seems that the future of medicine is already here. Surgeons and researchers behind the first pig kidney transplantation into a live human patient called it a major breakthrough, saying the procedure is successful could pave the way to helping countless patients on dialysis or transplant waiting list. It was truly the most beautiful kidney I have ever seen. Transplant surgeon Dr. Tatsuo Kawai and his team are hailing what they call a major breakthrough after what they say is the first ever successful transplant of a pig kidney into a live human patient. Kawai described the moment after the kidney was hooked up to the 62-year-old man who had end-stage renal disease. The four-hour surgery was performed on March 16th at the Massachusetts General Hospital in Boston. The hospital said the patient is recovering well and set to be discharged soon. He had received a human kidney transplant at the same hospital in 2018 after seven years on dialysis. But the organ failed five years later, putting him back on dialysis. His new kidney was provided by biotech company eGenesis from a pig with about the same sized organs that had been genetically edited to remove genes that could be harmful to a human recipient. Certain human genes were also added to improve compatibility. And some viruses inherent to pigs with the potential to infect humans were inactivated. The renal experts are hoping the transplanted organ will last at least two years. eGenesis CEO Dr. Mike Curtis sees the surgery as a milestone that could turn hope into reality for the queue of some 90,000 Americans waiting for donor kidneys. Researchers have been working for decades on the possibility of using animal organs for transplants, known as xenotransplantation, but rejection by the human body has been a stumbling block. In 2021, NYU surgeons had successfully transplanted a genetically modified pig kidney into a brain-dead patient whose family consented to the experiment shortly before life support was due to be switched off. And finally tonight, we see a long-lived tradition takes its place in Parisian culture once more. Paris waiters carried their trays across the Paris streets as the city revived its historic cafe waiters race after a 13-year hiatus. The event gathered around 200 waiters from various cafes across the city who were tasked with carrying a tray with a croissant, a cup of coffee and a glass of water on it along a 12-mile route. A few rules are applied, no running, no spilling of water and only one hand to hold the tray. The race first held in 1914 had not taken place since 2011 after organizers failed to find sponsors. It was revived with the financial support of the Paris City Hall and Ward Authority which provided 100,000 euros budget. The 2024 winners were awarded gastronomic outings and tickets to the Paris Olympics opening ceremony. Well, that is all the stories we have for you tonight. See you tomorrow with more updates on the happenings of the world. Thank you for watching and have a good night.